Hello, Connect. My name is Eric Bichard, and I'm a developer advocate here at Couchbase for Node.js. Welcome to my talk, Rage with Couchbase, building a full stack JavaScript application with React, Apollo, GraphQL, Express, and of course, Couchbase. So we're going to be talking about the Rage stack today. It's just a term that I've coined for all these tools that we put together to, to create a full stack JavaScript application. And you know, the database can be whatever you want. We're going to use Couchbase because it's great to use a NoSQL document database along with a JavaScript application. We're also going to be using um, React and Apollo GraphQL on the client side and Express and Express GraphQL on the server side. In our Express application, we'll also use Couchbase Node.js SDK, and that's going to allow us to connect to our Couchbase database and, you know, make queries and return data back to the API. So some of the concepts that we'll cover in this full stack JavaScript application uh, with React and GraphQL is server versus client. We're going to talk about GraphQL schemas, types, inputs, queries, mutations, and resolvers. Again, we'll use the Couchbase Node.js SDK, the Nickel query language. We'll talk about Graphical and Postman, which are both clients that we can connect to our GraphQL API. And we'll talk about why you would use one versus the other. We'll consume our GraphQL in React with Apollo GraphQL. And we'll also talk a little bit about post install and concurrently, these are tools that we're gonna to use to help us run our demo and run our server and client um, kind of in tandem with each other. Great, um, I do wanna give you guys a link for some resources for this talk. If you go to bit.ly slash rage connect, and the last portion of that is um, case sensitive. If you go here, you'll find not only the repo that we're using today and the demo application that we're building, but you'll also find a bunch of resources um, on basically things that I used uh, in order to build this application, um, concepts and uh, other, other resources that are useful for building a full stack JavaScript application, especially using React and Express. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and um, get over to our demo. So let's take a look at the project that we have set up real quick. We have this root directory here. It's called Rage with Couchbase. And that's um, the root of the project. Now we have an NPM package here, which right now doesn't have anything installed, but we'll come back to this later. We also have this server folder, and that's where we're gonna start off. Now I've gone ahead and created a server.js file and initiated um, a, a, an NPM package uh, here in this directory as well. And we'll do that in our client directory later on too. So we have our server.js and what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through basically the, the five different steps in kind of creating a GraphQL server. Um, I have snippets set up over here in VS code. So it should be um, just really quick. I'm going to add the snippets instead of you watching me have to write out all the code and that should make it make things go along a little bit faster, but I will explain everything that we're adding. Okay. So first off, um, let's go ahead and install Express, Express GraphQL, GraphQL, and Couchbase, uh, as well as cores. We need cores because we have a client and a server kind of running, running in tandem with each other, and that's going to cause cross-site scripting issues, so we use cores to remedy that. So while that's installing, I'll go ahead and start explaining what we're doing here. So we need to uh, require Express, which is the package that helps us build um, this API. And along with Express and Express GraphQL and GraphQL, these packages do all the really heavy lifting for us. As well, we'll be using the Couchbase SDK. This is SDK version three. And, and then we have cores set up up here as well. All right. So we're requiring all these packages so that we can use them in our application. That's all we're doing here. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to um, create our Express application. We're going to use cores. So this is basically all that you have to do in order to use these two packages right here, right? Um, basically create a, a variable and assign it to ex the Express method, and that's going to create our, uh, our Express server. 
then we're just going to use app cores. Next thing we're doing is we're connecting to our Couchbase cluster um, using the basic localhost uh, URL and then username and password are just a very simple username and password, right? We're not using, um, we're just hard coding these in here. We're telling it what bucket we're connecting to. Um, and so that's something we wanna go look at really quickly. So let's take a look at our Couchbase server. We have a bucket called travel sample, which is one of the buckets that we use in most of our demos here at Couchbase. And if we go inside and look at some of the documents, the airline documents are the ones that we're gonna be working with in this application. So as you can see here, we have ID for an airline and type. These are things that shouldn't change in the document. Um, we will give our users the ability to change name, the codes, uh, or country and call sign. And I'll show you how to do that uh, with the GraphQL server. We'll create something called a mutation to give the user the ability to change those, kind of like a, a CRUD operation. All right, um, that's pretty much all we have to show there. So the next thing we need to do is we need to define our actual GraphQL schema. So let's go through this line by line here. So the first thing we're doing is creating an airline to work with. And notice this has all the same fields as our document in the database. Um, because when we're getting an airline, we wanna get all of this information back, right? So that's why we're defining it all here. The ID is an integer and the rest of these are all strings. Um, next is our airline input. Think of this as kind of like an interface for a form if you had like a web form set up and you wanted the user to be able to pass call sign country, uh, either of the codes or name and be able to uh, update that document in the database. But instead we're actually passing this object to GraphQL and it's kind of creating a contract with GraphQL for uh, the mutation that we're eventually gonna create, which uh, we'll just say, hey, if they're passing any of these, that's fine, anything else, uh, is not allowed, all right? Next, we have uh, three queries. Now, we are only gonna be using this top one right here because it's very simple in our application. And we're gonna create a master detail page for the airlines. Basically, you select an airline, it shows the airlines on the other side. Um, but I also wanted to show you how to retrieve something from the database um, just by key as well. You know, hey, how could we make this a little bit different so that we can pass the region like United States or United Kingdom into our query and then return all the airlines just for that uh, portion of the world, okay? Finally, we're setting up, so this is a query versus individual uh, types which are relative to our documents. So a query will only retrieve data where a mutation can actually do something with the data, right? Modify it, change it, insert, all these kind of different things you can do with a mutation. Um, so we're, say, we're saying um, update airline. That's what we're gonna call this one. And we're gonna uh, ask for an ID. In other words, an airline ID. Think of uh, the number 112. 112 is for Flystar. That's one of the airlines uh, in our documents. And then we're going to also ask for an input. And the input will be one to many of these fields here passed by the user. And whatever they're passing us is gonna be the new value for this document, okay? So if you pass the exact same thing that's already there, it won't change anything. If you pass uh, something different, like uh, United States instead of United Kingdom, it'll update just the country. If you pass all of them, with a new value, obviously it'll update every document in, in the database for that particular airline, sorry, every field in the document for that particular airline, except for type or ID, which we don't wanna change, all right? Uh, great, so we have all of our types set up and basically our schema is here. And we're gonna pass this into something here in a minute, but first we need to define our resolvers. Now, our resolvers are going to tell our GraphQL query how to work with um, each of these. So whenever you get a query for Airlines UK, what, is, what am I doing with the database? Airline by key, I get an ID. What, what am I doing? Am I going to send a nickel query over to the database? No, I'm going to send just the key so I can, so I can get just that key back. Um, Notice that Airlines UK returns multiple airlines. That's why we have this, it kind of looks like it's in, in, inside of an array because we're actually returning a bunch of airline objects inside of an array. That's how you specify that you're receiving back a list versus one single airline. 
Now, airline by region is very similar to this one, except we're, we're allowing for a region to be passed in. But of course, it's going to be of type uh, airline array as well. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and create our resolvers for each one of these queries and this one mutation. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right. And I do want to change one piece because um, I've actually updated this. What we're going to do is we're going to return new doc. Let's just change that really quick because um, this is a little bit better, better way of doing that. And I didn't change it before I started. So, okay. So what we're doing here is we're going out um, to get the airline by key, and then we are creating like a new document and then we're upserting that to the database. But let's go through each one of these one by one. All right, so Airlines UK is very simple. We are saying, hey, reach out to our cluster, call the query command and pass in this piece of nickel right here, all right? So the only two differences in these pieces of nickel, notice that they look a lot like SQL, that's the point. Um, the only thing that's different here is that this one is kind of hard-coded hard with the United Kingdom, where this one we're actually um, using a parameterized query and because we're having region passed in. So for this one, we're just passing in this kind of hard-coded nickel query, and whatever gets returned here is going to be stored as result. And then if we dig down into that, result.rows will be that list of airlines, that, that array of airlines. Pretty simple. So if someone calls Airlines UK, it's going to do all this and return a list of airlines to them. Next, we have Airlines by region. It is almost exactly the same as what we did above, except we are creating this options parameters. Uh, we're, we're accepting region for this function, um, for this query. And we are then saying, hey, parameter region will be, you know, United Kingdom or United States. And then we are passing into cluster.query not only the query, but also the options as a second optional argument. Again, we return it in the exact same way. Then we have airline by key. Now what's great about airline by key and also update airline is they do not use nickel queries. When you do use a nickel query with Couchbase uh, through the SDK, you are telling it, hey, um, I, I'm giving you this string and you're gonna have to figure out what to do with it. So it's going to, uh, there's going to be a query analyzer involved, and there's going to be a little bit more overhead involved. Now, when we just retrieve by key, um, we can skip that overhead and just say, hey, we know the actual ID for this airline, and it's airline underscore 112, for instance, all right? And so this will get one airline, right? And we will return that with result.value, all right? When it's one, it's result.value. When it's several, it's result.rows. Um, these are specific to how get and query return that data as well. All right, so now that we understand airline by key, we can start talking about this mutation, okay? So the mutation takes an ID, let's say it's 112 again, and then some input. Maybe it is the country and the name, but it could be all of them. So what we're doing is first we're, we're taking that ID and we're, and, we're, and we're doing the same thing we got here and we're getting that single document, right, result. And um, then what we're doing is we are saying, okay, let's create a new doc. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the fields from result and we're gonna spread them out right here, okay? Now, any of those that match one of these fields, we're gonna replace it with one of these values. So every time we're actually gonna update the, the value of every field every time, but depending on whether they pass in with input. So if they pass, uh, with the input, they only pass in um, country and name, then call sign is going to get the original value, and then these two codes are going to get their original values, but country is going to get the input value, and name is going to get the input value. And that, and that can work in any way uh, that you can think of here. If you pass in one or all of them or just a couple, um, depending on how many you pass into this input, it will actually update those or not update them. It's pretty simple. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this new document. So once this is all done, once this is assigned, um, we're going to have a new document here with new values in it, uh, hopefully. And we're just going to then call collection.upsert and we are going to pass it 
the airline ID, and then the actual new document to replace it. We will also return that new doc, the same object that we have here, so that we can relay back to the person calling into the GraphQL server, hey, here's the new document. Here's what the new document should look like. And that's just, um, it's helpful for them. So when they, when they make the query, if they see that response, they can say, oh, look, my, my country and my name were updated. Great. Everything else was left the same. Perfect. Right? It's just some kind of validation for them. Now, um, finally, we need to actually spin up this uh, GraphQL server um, on an actual uh, endpoint here in our Express API. So basically all we're doing is we're defining a server port and a URL. All GraphQL APIs are just one endpoint. So it's gonna be localhost colon 4000 slash GraphQL. And then what we're doing here is we're, uh, we're using this GraphQL HTTP method that is imported up here with Express GraphQL. And we're telling it, hey, here is the schema. Here is all the different resolvers in this uh, variable called root. We could have also called this resolvers. And we're also gonna tell it graphical true, which this will give us a little client that we can use to test out our queries to make sure everything's working. So I'll show you a little bit of that and then I'll also show you how to do the same thing with Postman. So at this point, I think what we wanna do is go ahead and run this server here. So let's uh, CD into the right directory here. That's the server directory and we will run node server. Great. Now what we can do is since we uh, have this graphical true here, we've actually got this link that we can click on. And let's go ahead and clear that out for a minute. So what we have here, I'm gonna move this down, down here. What we have here is kind of like a graphical playground or a GraphQL API playground. And um, so what we wanna do is I have um, some queries for each one of these uh, queries and mutations that we set up, all right? So here is the first one. It is very basic. We say, hey, we're defining a query. It's called Get Airlines UK. And then this is the actual uh, query name and the fields that we want, right? You can actually leave this name off up here if you absolutely wanted to. And you could just say, hey, this is a query. Uh, this is the name of our query in the GraphQL API. But it's also okay to give this, this query a name uh, kind of on the client side, okay? That's kind of a confusing, but that's how it works. So when I run this, I get all of the airlines by UK, right? We, we, um, that's exactly how we set it up for this specific query to only return airlines that are in the UK. Now, the cool thing about GraphQL is that if this were a REST endpoint, when we call this query, we get this back every single time, right? This is, we get the same data back every time. But what we can do here is maybe we don't need these codes and maybe we don't need the type for some crazy, well, we probably don't need the type, right? So now what I can do is I can run this and notice that what's getting sent over the wire now is you know, not as much. It's, it's less fields being returned for each of these uh, objects in this airlines array. So that's one of the great things about using GraphQL is that you're, you give a lot of power to your developers to be able to decide what parts uh, of this uh, data that they want back, right? I could, just, I could just get back IDs if I wanted to. All right. Um, the next one we want to try out is the, um, the airlines by region. Okay. So this one's going to be a little bit different and I'll explain it once I paste it in here. And let's put in here United States instead of United Kingdom. Okay. So what's going on here? We have a query called get airlines by region, right? Again, you could totally leave this off if you want to and do this. Um, and what we're saying is, hey, region is a string and it's required. We have to have this string in order to return something. Now, if there wasn't a bang on the end of this, then we would have to create our query in a way that it, it would be okay if it didn't receive this region. But we, we want the region, we need the region to be able to return the right data back. Then we're saying, um, okay, this, uh, region down here, the text for this region is going to come here. So United States is going to be here. And we're telling our query, 
that we're using the airlines by region query. It's expecting a region and our region is, for instance, United States. So when we run this, we should get all of the, uh, all of the airlines that are in the United States. And we can do the same thing as we did before, right? Trim it down, whatever. All right. So now you've used um, both the, a, a basic query and a query with a parameter. Great. We're moving along. Um, next we want to do is the, we want to do get airline by key. Okay. So behind the scenes, our SDK is creating um, a nickel query to get this information back. On this one, it's just going to be retrieving by key. So a little bit less overhead might be a little bit faster. So get airline by key. And then down here, we need to say ID and we're going to do 112. Right. All right. So now what we should be able to do is get back just one airline and it'll be airline number 112. So airline underscore 112. Um, there we go. And it's Flystar in the United Kingdom. Um, now that we've done that, remember that our mutation kind of uses a similar method to uh, retrieve an airline, but then it gives you the ability to update it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that would look like in our graphical editor. And I'm doing this, I'm, I'm doing all this copying and pasting for a reason because I want you to see in the graphical editor kind of um, how hard it is to work with different queries and go back and forth between them, right? If I wanted to go back to my um, uh, Airlines UK query right now, I'd either have to control Z or I'd have to paste, re repaste that information back in here. Um, but let's go ahead and finish this mutation real quick and then we'll go look at how Postman can help solve that. So we have um, update existing airline and you should understand how this works uh, the same. So we have an ID, which is integer and it's required. We also have an input, which is airline input and actually it should be required as well. All right. Um, then we uh, can say, hey, our ID is going to be 112 and our input is going to be basically this object right here where we're passing call sign and country along. Now, we don't want to just change it to the exact same name. Like if we're going to try to test this out, we should, you know, change this a little bit. We'll call this United States too. And so what we should see here when we run this, okay? So when we run this, we're going to be updating call sign and country for uh, document number 112 in the database. Now, what we'll expect to see back is anything that we have defined in the fields right here. So we definitely want call sign and country, but even though we're not changing this IATA code, what if we went ahead and wanted to go ahead and get that back and maybe we also wanted to get the ID back? Uh, or let's just, get the, let's just get the code back, okay? So let's run this. And look, here's, here's the data that we've gotten back. So you can see that the, uh, it's been, the call sign's been updated and the country's been updated. And we've also got back the information for IATA, which is uh, 5W, which is what it was before. Now, if we wanted to change this back, we can just remove this and change this back to United Kingdom. And we could then run it again. And now it's been uh, call sign and country have been changed back. Okay, great. So we've kind of covered how to do this with GraphQL um, or graphical, um, but you can see we had some issues here and it was kind of hard to do that. So let's go and look at Postman real quick and see how that can help us out. So in Postman, we have these collections and we have all these different um, posts here. So one is um, Get Airlines UK. And you can see that we just have our query here, no variables because this one doesn't require any variables. We have Get Airlines by Key. And that one does have some variables over here. We also have the ability to set up environment variables, which we can then have our ID um, up here in, in this environment variable. So we can just change it here, keep changing this as we wanted to like, you know, 10, we can do 10 instead. And then we can run this one, right? Um, get airline by region, same thing. We kind of have a, an environment variable set up here. We can go in here and change this to France and then run that. Great. All right. Um, also update existing airline. Let's just check this out real quick. Let's do 
Uh, let's just change this to flight to start Z again and then send it. All right, there it is, and then update it. So all of these work. Now that's back to normal. So um, as you can see, Postman is a lot more powerful. Um, if you're creating GraphQL APIs, especially if there's a lot of different um, queries and mutations, you're going to want something like this to be able to set up a collection and so that you don't have to keep copying and pasting this stuff each time. You can just move between these tabs and, um, and, and test out your, your endpoints. As well, you can set up unit tests inside of Postman. So uh, I'm a big fan of using Postman instead of Graphical. But again, Graphical is great uh, if you're just spinning up a... Uh, a GraphQL query, maybe on a server, and you want to enable that real quick just to make sure it's working and you've got, you got a query already ready to go to just kind of test it, make sure everything works. Hey, that, that's a, it's a good reason uh, to use Graphical. But if you were deploying to a server, you would uh, set that to false. You, wouldn't, uh, you probably wouldn't create uh, that and you would use something like Postman and, you, and all of your developers would use Postman and collections and everything to, um, to run those queries and to test them out and to run unit tests against them. Against them all that kind of stuff. Great. So uh, with that out of the way, what we need to do now is we have a, a server created and we need to create the client, right? So we've got uh, a Node.js server, GraphQL API up and running. The next thing we want to do is CD back into the main directory. And what we're going to do is we're going to clone a React application that I already have built. So as you can see here, um, what we're doing is we're cloning this uh, React Apollo client repo. We're then CDing into that folder and we're moving any of the Git information, right? Because we want to take this repo, pull it into our project, but not necessarily keep any of the, the Git uh, information related to it. So let's go ahead and run that. All right. And now we're inside of this directory here. And um, what we want to do is we want to go over a few files. Um, we have an index.html up here in the public and all of it, all it has is this div ID root. Okay. And what we're doing in our react application, if you're not familiar with, if, with react is we have this entry point and we're saying, Hey, get element by ID root and inject the app at that point. So app.js at that point. So then here is our app. This is basically the frame of our application. It's a very simple application and I'll run it in just a moment. So we have this browser router, which um, is a data provider, which provides data about our routes and any um, query parameters and any of, that, any of that kind of stuff. So if we have forward slash home or just forward slash, it'll return the home uh, component in this area right here, right? inside of this app container. However, if we pass airlines or airlines forward slash 112, it'll say, oh, that 112 is an ID. And that is going to be some data that the children, uh, of, uh, the children of the browser router will, will want to uh, subscribe to, okay? So these, no matter which one of these components loads, it will have, it will have data from the browser router um, so that we can use. So we'll be able to grab that 112 out of there and we'll be able to do something with it. Okay, um, we need to look at the, these components in routes. These are our home and our airlines component. And then in these partial components here, these are components that get loaded into another component, all right? So we have airline list and airline details. So let's go real quick and take a look at if, if we call forward slash airlines, here's the component that's gonna get returned. And you'll see it has an airline list that will show up on the left and then an airline details on the right. So what we need to do real quick is we need to go ahead and run npm install on this directory. And then let's just go ahead and run this uh, React application. It's not hooked up to the database yet. It's not uh, using the GraphQL client yet, but it will still work and I'll be able to show you the basic layout, okay? Let's just let this finish real quick. All right, so now we can go ahead and get started um, running this.
So here's our application. It's pretty simple. It has a home page and an airlines page. The airline page, page will have an airline list on the left and a details on the right, okay? So that's kind of what we're looking at right here. Um, what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to go to forward slash airlines and what we will have here is a list of airlines on the left and on the right it'll say select an airline. Um, whenever we add an airline there, it doesn't do anything with it right now, but what's gonna happen is when we click on one of these airlines, it's gonna change the URL to airlines slash whatever ID of the airline we clicked on. And what that, what that airline page is gonna do is it's gonna grab that 112, it's going to look at its current list of airlines and say, okay, which one matches 112? Okay, it's this one. Let me pluck that one out of there and I'm gonna send that over to this component on the right. And now the component on the right knows uh, what information to display for the information that was just clicked, for the uh, airline that was just clicked, all right? So that's basically how that'll work. So if we wanna take a look really quickly at airline list, the, the, the component that's gonna load right here, here it is. And basically it's gonna receive a, uh, some data, which is a whole list of airlines. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, so we have some pagination going on here, but what you really just need to pay attention to is that this list items right here, what's gonna happen is it's gonna take all the current airlines that are currently showing and it's gonna map them out and it's gonna create some list items. And then we're gonna load those list items right here into this unordered list, okay? That's it, that's all you have to uh, understand for this page. It receives a, a list of airlines. Yeah, there's some pagination going on, but um, once it finds the set that it wants to return and, and have displayed on the page, it's just going to print those out as list items and that's gonna, come, that's gonna be uh, kind of loaded right here into this unordered list. Now on the right hand side, um, there's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be taking an airline. So it's gonna be just getting one object, which is a single airline. Now, before you actually click on an airline and there's no 112 up in the address, there's no airline ID in the address, this airline that's coming in is gonna be null. Um, so what's gonna happen is it's just gonna show this block down here and it's gonna say select an airline. However, if airline is truthy, if it has a value other than null, then what's gonna happen is we're gonna show, this is a ternary statement here, so we, if airline do this, otherwise do this. So if an, if an actual airline gets passed in, we're gonna show the airline name, the airline call sign, uh, the codes for it and everything. So we'll have set like a master detailed page. You click on one side, it shows the information on the other. This would be very useful in the case of like an e-commerce store where you have products and you click on one and it goes to another page and shows more information, same concept. All right, um, we also have a menu. This is, this is a, a file that just gets uh, loaded up into the top nav but um, this is a truly reusable component because it could be, we could have like a side nav if we wanted to and we could use this menu in two different places and maybe style it horizontally uh, with CSS on, on the side nav and then, uh, or uh, vertically on the side nav and then maybe horizontally on the top nav. So th this is what is great about React is you can you know, use these components over if you need to. All right, so with that out of the way, with that kind of explanation, we, what we need to do is we need to convert this application to start using the GraphQL client. Right now, it doesn't do anything. So let's go ahead and install some, let's install something real quick. So this is gonna be React uh, Apollo Hooks, uh, Apollo Boost and GraphQL. Just a few packages to help us work with the GraphQL as a client. We're also gonna need to import those things that we just added into our, airlines file. So we'll put those right up here. And we're going to kind of breeze through this because we're already running out of time. Um, we're also going to import a file named with Apollo provider. Now this is a higher order component. And what it does is it takes the, it takes a component in and an endpoint. And then what it's going to do is it's going to create an Apollo GraphQL client using that endpoint. And it's also gonna wrap a data provider around whatever component we pass in. So this, you can pretty much just replace this with airline. 
Like literally we could actually pull that in here uh, and, and, or we could have this on the same page as the airline. But what I've uh, decided to do instead is put it in its own file and then call this wrapped component. And then we actually pass a, a component in. So airline will come in, it'll get wrapped. And then anything uh, that's inside of this Apollo provider will receive uh, any of the data. So we could, if we had several components in here, they would all receive uh, that, that data that the Apollo provider is providing. Okay, that's a little bit uh, confusing, but I just wanted to show you how that works. So just understand that when we, we pull this in, we got to make a few changes real quick to the file just so that this uh, airlines file gets wrapped properly. All right, so we're saying, hey, const wrapped component equals with Apollo provider. We're passing in airlines, which is the current component uh, in this URL. And then what we're returning is whatever that component gives us back, which like I said, is, a, is an Apollo provider with, a, with our airlines component in the middle, right? Okay, um, we also need to bring in these two components here because this is just text right now on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. So what we need to do is um, import the, that airline list and airline details component. And we also need to update this part right here, this, these rows and columns and actually bring in the actual component. Now, as you can see here, airline list gets uh, a variable called airlines for its data. Airline details gets a variable called airline for its data. All right. Um, another change that we're gonna have to make to this file is right here. And we want to be able to pluck that match value out of um, the browser provider. Uh, the browser gives us some data. The browser provider gives us some data. And what we need is uh, there's, a, there's a match. You could get history of the browser. You can get a couple different things here, but we just want to grab match. So what we're doing here is we're deconstructing this um, object and grabbing match out of it so that we can use it. And that's where we'll get that number 112, right? That's in the, that's in the uh, browser or whatever the airline um, ID is. All right, finally, we're going to bring in some code that gets that number, so air, it gets that airline ID by matching that, mat, using match.params, and then ID is because that's what we called it over here. So if we go back to app real quick, we can see, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, see, we called it ID, right? So in our airlines JSX, um, match.params ID will be airline ID. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use query, which this is a React hook, which allows us to uh, basically uh, the Apollo client that we're using, we want to use this method called use query, which all we need to do is pass in the query that we've already created over here in another file, which is just like what we've been using over in uh, Postman and inside graphical. It's just a basic GraphQL query. Um, this is a called a tagged template in JavaScript. And you can think of this as a, as a method or a function, right? So basically it's called GQL, that's the name of the function. And then the, fir the parameter is this string, uh, is this uh, GraphQL query. So just understand that we're exporting this out of this page and importing it over here. And then we're just passing that into use query. So what's gonna happen there is our GraphQL client is using this use query. We're passing in a query. And so some data is gonna be returned, possibly an error, hopefully not, uh, or something just letting us know that, hey, this is still loading, you're, you're still waiting for your data to come back. But once the loading is finished, and as long as we don't receive an error, um, then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say data.airlinesuk is now a variable called airlines. So this will be um, our, our airlines array that comes back to us, all right? And we're gonna just call that airlines. Then we're gonna say, hey, we also want a variable called airline. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that match params ID. If it exists, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find um, the one airline inside this airlines array that matches that airline ID that's in our uh, URL. And then we're gonna return just that one airline. And that's how these two components get their data. The airline list gets the full list, the airline details gets just the specific airline or 
a value of null. Okay, so that's all there is to it. So um, I think you understand how everything's work, uh, uh, how everything works. Let's go ahead and run. Uh, we're going to install one more package actually, really quickly, because this will help us. So this we're going to install something called concurrently, and what this is going to do is it's gonna allow us to run both our server and client with one command. Uh, this is really helpful if you have a repo um, like this one. So uh, basically we have this client script that says, hey, go into the client and start it. And we have a server script that says, hey, go into the server and start it. Then we have a start command that does both of them concurrently. So this is the command that we're gonna use. We're gonna run npm start right down here, and that's gonna kick off both of these, okay? One more thing to, know, to mention here is this post install. So let's say that um, I saved all my work right now and pushed this up to GitHub. Um, you wouldn't see this node modules file in the main directory and you wouldn't see the node modules uh, file or folders inside of the server or client directory. But when we clone down our project, we'd have to run npm install not only on the outside project, but then change directories into the client and the server and run npm install there. Well, we don't want people to have to do that. So what this does is it says, hey, when you, when you pull down this repo and run npm install, not only am I going to add this node modules to the main directory, but afterwards I'm gonna go change directories into the Couchbase uh, server directory and install the dependencies there and then also into the client and install the dependencies there, okay? So it just, it just makes it really easy to work with this repo for anyone else. Um, I think we've got everything we need. We should be able to just run npm start now and it should run client and server both together. Uh-oh. I didn't save. Just gotta save. All right, here we go. Concurrently running client and server together. All right, let's wait for this to load because that's not what we're supposed to be getting. All right, so we have our home, which there's really nothing on. And if we click on airlines, look, we have a whole list of airlines here. Right, and they're paginated. If you really want to look at how the pagination is done, it's one of the files in, in, in this uh, directory. Um, however, if we click on one of these airlines, so currently you're seeing select an airline because there is no number up here. There's no you know, forward slash 112. There's no forward slash airline ID. So it's just getting a null value right now. So it knows, that, you know, hey, just show them this for now. But when I click on one, we are going to see that number get put up there. And now we are gonna see the information for that individual airline. So again, we've got like a nice little master detail page here. It's running full stack. We're using React. We're using Apollo client on the front end. We're using a GraphQL server on the back end. We've got several queries and mutations. We could build out this application and do more stuff um, because we have several other queries already created. Like we could do some, we could, we could keep working on this right now if we wanted to, uh, but we're not going to because we're running out of time. So that is the, that is the project. Um, again, I will go ahead and pull up our URL here. So if you would like to uh, get the resources for this talk, go to bit.ly slash rage connect. And um, there's information about me there. There's uh, there is uh, resources that I use to put this all together and um, podcasts and all sorts of uh, YouTube videos and everything, all the things that kind of I use to learn the things that I'm showing you here are all there. Um, again, my name is Eric Bouchard. I'm a developer advocate for Couchbase. You can get a hold of me on Twitch and Twitter at HTTP Junkie. And I have a LinkedIn, uh, Eric-B. And yeah, my DMs are always open. I just want to thank you for watching my talk and have a great day.